out hunting. It's more challenging than ever, especially late in the season like this, but we all run up against tough coyotes any time of the year. Now, how I've separated myself out is I use five different strategies. And I'm gonna share those with you right now. The first, well, it's calls. And you should know three different call categories within your calls. The first one is the prey and distress sounds. And the prey and distress, don't just go with the old rabbit in distress or the jackrabbit, the hare in distress. Try something just a little bit different. Maybe go to a rodent. Look through your call library. Use something different that you doubt anyone else is using. The coyotes won't know if there's a piglet in distress in the middle of nowhere, Wyoming like this, or in Alabama. So try something different. The next thing, well, coyote vocalizations. I love coyote vocalizations. And on your electronic caller, there's gonna be a pretty good library. Three of them you need to know are the lone howl, group howls, and challenge howls. Now I like to use my collar and answer it a lot with my own mouth with a diaphragm. <coughs> Do that. Even that simple how can bring a coyote in. Now what's the third category? Well the third category is well confidence calls. I want these coyotes to think not only there's a coyote here eating something but they have confidence to come in. And what calls bring those coyotes in? Well birds. Birds like jays, like crows, like magpies out west here. And again, you can find a call on your library, the crow call, or if you're a turkey hunter, you got one of these, right? <coughs> and when you call like that, whether it's jays, magpies, or crows, you're gonna bring those birds in if they're in the area, and the coyotes will see those, boost their confidence. Boom! You've got a coyote that's ready to roll right in to shooting range. The next category we're gonna talk about, strategy, is field of view. You need to be able to see the killing fields. You have to have a command of everything around you because these coyotes are gonna use every little terrain feature they can find. Come in low, pop up at the last second and see you. There's shrubbery, brushes, any type of grass. They're gonna use that as well to cloak and veil their arrival to you. So you need to be up high in most situations. Now it doesn't need to be super high, like a skyscraper high, but several extra feet above the area and have a commanding view of anywhere those coyotes will come. And remember this, they're gonna try to go downwind, and we're gonna cover that in another category. But you wanna watch that downwind area, at least portions of it and up, where they have to pop through before they get fully downwind on you. Now what can you use to help you find the best site? Well, your hunting app. Hunt Stand has topographical overlays, and these overlays help you look at all the rolls, the folds, and you can even use the 3D map, zoom in, and fly virtually through the country. Use your little icons, mark the spots you want, and you're off and running to the best high vantage point for coyote hunting. The third category, the area you need to be in command next, well, it's the wind. You have to be in charge of the wind because the coyotes, well, they trust their eyes, but they really trust their noses. And so they're gonna try to go downwind at almost every time possible. Pull up your hunt stand hunting app, look at the weather and figure out where the wind is coming and then use the hunt zone graphic, which shows the, your scent dispersion going out on that field. From that and the satellite overlay, you can pick your best position to watch where those coyotes are gonna to try to circle. Now you can set up wind, you can have a view downwind, you can have a crosswind, but wherever you set up, you've got to be able to shoot before those coyotes get right to your scent. Now one way to help you out is to set up downwind, then walk upwind about 100, 150 yards. You can either use a decoy, coyote decoy, or your collar and put that up there. So the sound, the visual, that's all up there. I even use coyote urine up in that area and spray it down a little bit. So that coyote, he's gonna come in, try to circle downwind in that gap you left. You're downwind a little further. He's looking at the collar. He's looking at the decoy. He's actually got some scent and you have got a great shot on that coyote that thought he was gonna win the game. This next category, well, it's something I 
kind of developed myself, came up with, you gotta be where the coyotes wanna be. A backyard, farmhouses, ranch houses, those groves around those places, they are all food delights for coyotes. They find a lot of stuff there, rodents, the occasional cat, scraps, some of the cattle feed, all this stuff is good eating to a coyote. So in the dark of the night, they're raiding these spots. They're also hitting the big grassy areas where there's rodents, thick brush where there's rabbits, anywhere, anywhere that they hunt, you've gotta think about those places. And then take out your hunt stand hunting app and look for the next place that they're going to go to bed, to hide out. They're not necessarily gonna hide out near a county road, a busy highway, or the backyard. They're gonna go a mile or more out, hole up. Look at your satellite overlay, your image there, and try to figure out that spot. And then what you need to do is before the sun rises, be halfway between where they've been hunting and where they're going, be where they wanna be. And then in the afternoon, it's just a reverse. They're gonna go somewhere hunting. So you wanna be in an ambush spot, not where they're gonna be hunting, but close to where they're leaving and then ambush them there with calls. If you like to midday call, well, find that sanctuary, that refuge, and call on the fringes. Use that hunt stand hunting app. It's great for digging up all these little spots, coyotes like to hide out, and then you can be where the coyotes wanna be. This last category that I wanna share with you, it's all about timing. It, well, it's actually about spending enough time on stand. For years, it was always the 15 minute rule. If you didn't have a coyote come in by 15 minutes, huh, they weren't coming. I don't believe that. I didn't believe it then, I don't believe it now. Now, I hunt some big country. These coyotes do take a little longer to come in, but even when I've been hunting down in Kansas and other states, those coyotes, they don't necessarily just charge in. And late in the year like this, when they've been educated and breeding season is going on, and if you're using coyote vocalizations, all that comes into play for a much slower coyote. Now, how long should you stay? I always think bare minimum, 30 minutes. 45 minutes is better, and this may fool you, but I stay almost always an hour. Now, a couple of my buddies years ago, they separated by three miles, and they howled at each other, and they could hear each other's howls at that distance, and they could even hear coyotes beyond that, so the coyotes were hearing it. Now, will coyotes travel that far? Probably not. But if they're hearing it that far, you never know. And if a coyote is hearing it three miles or more, he's definitely hearing a mile. And in conditions like this, or a coyote that's just taking his leisurely time, it's gonna take a while. So sit there a little longer. What else have you got to do? Go home and mow the lawn? Not in a day like this. Good luck with your coyote hunting. Use those five strategies. They're what I use all the time. They don't always work, but every once in a while, I get lucky and you will too.